I regret to inform fans and enthusiasts of Lenovo ThinkPad, specifically my ThinkPad T61, of which there was a video review not so long ago, that it's unfortunately met an untimely end by virtue of its diseased NVIDIA Quadro graphics chipset and card. Unfortunately, as is unfortunately frequently the case with laptops made during that time period and with those NVIDIA discrete graphics cards, uh, even MacBooks, uh, 2009 MacBooks that come with NVIDIA Quattro graphics on board, suffer an untimely end uh, after the graphics hardware begins to melt down, so to speak, and do irreparable damage and harm to itself and perhaps even other ancillary devices of the computer. I was using my laptop to capture and encode DVAVI video files to 720p60 videos using QTGMC and I was just letting it do its thing and then I came back and there was all pixelation on the screen and um, needless to say that subsequent attempts to power it on and, and operate it as no one would normally were met with the same pixelation and gibberish on the screen and it's to my knowledge that you would be unable to repair that or fix it and if you could it probably wouldn't be cost effective nor feasible considering that you could probably buy the whole ThinkPad T61 for around seventy to eighty dollars on auction sites alike so there wouldn't even really be any sense in trying to hunt down the problem and fix it if you even could at that point and so a uh, replacement was sought and procured in the way of this Dell laptop but this isn't any Dell laptop it's my Dell Latitude E6500 I've had my eyes on the E series of Latitudes for many years at this point uh, it's been suggested on countless occasions that I perhaps purchase and try out a Latitude E6400 being one of Dell's business oriented PCs they have a keen eye toward usability, durability a proper keyboard that actually gives you somewhat acceptable tactile response and end user serviceability isn't an afterthought like it is on far too many modern consumer oriented PCs of the time and present day now if I can find the picture I took of this computer upon receipt of it from Federal Express you'll see that somebody just took this laptop and stuck it in a black plastic trash bag and put it inside a box with no padding on the top of it and so it was just free to flap around inside the box and bang around and sure enough that inflicted some damage to it which was quite a bit unfortunate the first sign of ill will done to this computer through the shipping people is uh, some broken plastic on the display bezel right near the latch actually cracked away and coming down here this piece here I snapped back down but it it's lost its little plastic latch that keeps this snapped down so this comes loose very easily and despite this not having a glossy finish it's just a texturized matte finish even though it it is soft to the touch but it has a texture um, to it it does seem to attract fingerprints quite easily and readily at that and somebody must have had a fascination with uh, stickers on here because there's sticker residue all over it uh, the front of the screen has sticker residue on the left side is a Kensington lock a USB 2.0 port an eSATA connection. This is the first computer I've ever owned with any such connection. I believe barring the uh, Optiplex 7010, but this is the first laptop with an eSATA port. A VGA port with the locking screws and an express card slot, which at first glance I thought this was bl just a blanking plate, but it isn't. You just remove this, it pops out of place, and it does have the connections. So it is a working express card slot for expansion. An SD card slot, which I was eminently surprised to find. Now, so your eyes don't deceive you, that's a 1394 four pin firewire connection. So, not only do I have the ease 
and simplicity provided for in the way of an SD card slot for accessing pictures and videos recorded on SD cards. But also on my T-piece camcorders, I can very simply transfer that video content or anything else that interfaces through a firewire connection using the onboard connector included on this laptop. Certainly won't see that on any modern day computer. Two more USB 2.0 ports, microphone and headphone jack, and a smart card slot which I have no use for but it's there nonetheless and is likely not easily removed. This over here is what Dell calls a Wi-Fi catcher switch just as a hardware on and off switch. A feature that seems very common on business PCs but doesn't really carry over on into consumer oriented PCs much to my chagrin so it's quite nice to have with a business oriented PCs all these extra frills and bells and whistles that aren't just for looks or aesthetics but are more so aimed toward usability and dependability as well as security and then this button here I believe is for enabling or disabling the built-in Bluetooth wireless radio with which this laptop would have shipped from the factory if it was so equipped and you happen to pay the big bucks for it but this one actually has had its Bluetooth module removed so that button does nothing above the left top hand corner of the optical drive is also a PC card slot so options for expandability abound on the Dell E6500 business class PC now if only I could figure out how to get that this button to stick in place without popping out all the time a 56k dial-up modem port this is an RJ11 um, single line telephone connection so if you're in an area remote area that lacks any sort of broadband connectivity uh, you can definitely connect this to a telephone line it's just a regular POTS line and then your gigabit ethernet port and then on the rear is, uh, what is this, a display port? Yes, that's a display port connector and your power connection. With this computer I did receive a genuine Dell charger which is literally thick as a brick and also feels like one. You definitely do some damage to somebody if forced to use this as a weapon. This is model number FA90PS0-00. Multi-voltage, so it's 100 to 240 volt, 50 to 60 hertz, and outputs 19 and a half volts, give or take, at 4.62 amps. And this is the 90 watt model. And this definitely feels of better quality than uh, anything you get from those Chinese um, outfits that sell generic replacements. So it's nice to get this with the computer. It's always nice to get a genuine power supply when buying something used. This might have even been capable of having some sort of stand attached to it so it sits upright that's the only use I could ascribe to this uh, mysterious outlet on here it's quite large and the power connection is not broken when you connect this to charge your computer you have this dangly spindly little thing hanging out the end and if you're not careful or you pull it you'll end up damaging the connector, if you're lucky, and if you're especially unfortunate, you might even end up damaging the internal power connector on the inside of the laptop. On the bottom of the computer, you're going to notice at first that there doesn't appear to be any way to... Honestly, it looks like it's missing the screw for the optical drive, which um, I can't remember it coming with one, so somebody wants to just either switch to optical drives or remove that screw for something and never replaced it, but it still was held securely in place unless you press that button and then remove the optical drive which it's a Dell branded model as it should be docking base connector you get a battery indication button which does work fully lights up in the typical blue Dell LEDs a casual glance might leave you with the impression that there isn't any way to easily access the internals of this machine, but you'd be so very wrong. <laughs> In fact, you only need to remove this single screw here to gain access to the inside of this machine. And this is a perfect example of why I have a preference in buying business-oriented PCs, because I've dealt with my fair share of consumer-oriented PCs that require you to remove its display, its keyboard, the keyboard bezel, just about everything just to change the RAM or the hard drive which is unacceptable and totally unnecessary 
So with this business PC, you just remove a single screw, remove this cover, and you're inside the computer. And what did it take? A whopping 30 seconds? As you would expect, and as was once commonplace on laptops that uh, came with versions of Windows that actually gave you a product key sticker or a certificate of authenticity as it is known. It's located in the battery compartment for added security and peace of mind. And of course with laptops running Windows 8 and 10 these days, well you don't even have to worry about that because they, you don't even get a certificate of authenticity. So heaven help you if you ever need to reinstall Windows and not just revert to a saved snapshot of sorts of its original configuration complete with all the bloatware from the original equipment manufacturer. And this is the PT434 56 watt hour battery. I believe they sell a 9 cell version, but that actually will, if I can install this with no further problems, there we go. I believe it juts out from the laptop another inch or so and will very obviously give you increased runtime and capacity, which I might actually take up and install but I have yet to decide on that considering the original battery with which it came works perfectly. And while a laptop does come standard with a microphone, much to my satisfaction, it lacks any of the provisions for a webcam. So you just get a microphone and that's it. Stereo speakers on either side of the keyboard. And the speakers actually only take up looks like a half inch, maybe a three quarters of an inch gap. You can't even see it really. And then the rest of this is just for show. And the palm rest is texturized. It's a matte finish. And then this indicator here represents that it also has wireless smart card capabilities, whatever that actually is. Probably would have a use in a business environment, but I have no use for that. Don't even know if it would work if I had something like that. Or if it's removed, like the Bluetooth and the mobile broadband modem was. And that black square you see left of the Dell logo above the keyboard is for this laptop's automatic display brightness functionality. There is a conventional touchpad with conventional buttons that are not integrated with the touchpad thankfully. As well as a pointing device, pointing stick. There's so many different names by which these are described and referred to by the manufacturers. Track point, if it was Lenovo, I believe it's called a pointing stick by Dell. And then some indicators up on the top for the hard drive, the battery, the wireless internet, and the Bluetooth, and the mobile broadband, both of which will not ever be seen illuminated on this machine since it isn't equipped. Some indicators for the keyboard. And then there are volume controls, which so very nice as well to have physical buttons for adjusting the volume instead of having to always navigate to the volume button on the taskbar. And now time to turn it on. This is the 15.4 inch display. And I actually had to whip out my tape measure. So I, I was at first under the belief that uh, this was a 15.6 inch, but it isn't. It's a 15.4 inch. If I'm not mistaken, it's counting up the RAM or checking the RAM right now. This was equipped with just a single one gigabyte um, DDR2 RAM module, and I've since replaced it to two two gigabyte modules for a total of four gigabytes of RAM. Although you can definitely upgrade this beyond the four gigabytes that many previous generation machines were limited to, such as even my ThinkPad R60 of quite some time ago. Admittedly, I'm still deliberating over whether or not to disable Windows Arrow or even to dual boot Windows XP for certain applications and uses before I'm overwhelmed by the usual peremptory demands to install Windows 10 on it because Windows 7 isn't secure or fill in the blank or that just that Windows 10 is so much better please don't save yourself and myself the time and trouble of doing so because I really don't have any intentions of installing Windows 10 on here it just doesn't suit my needs and just doesn't have anything going for me. I've actually installed everything here and configure it as per my liking, although I'm really having some trouble getting along with Firefox. It seems in a recent memory Firefox has grown so bloated that uh, if you leave it running for more than a few days with a few tabs open 
your system will slow to a crawl and there's little else you can do than just shut it down and restart it start from scratch and I won't have anything to do with Google Chrome on this machine so the only other option of course is Pale Moon which seems to work well but actually needed to have hardware acceleration disabled I noticed that when hardware acceleration was enabled it actually broke a number of the icons on the screen so for example if I go to tools options and use hardware acceleration and then restart this now and give it a moment to shut itself down the process see the icons start having these strange little glitches in them and the same is true with the download button There's, it works fine but it, it's just a little irksome to see these glitches on what is supposed to be a refined piece of software so really not all too sure what's taking place behind the scenes to cause that misbehavior this actually isn't running the factory Dell installation with all the uh, bloatware, but uh, considering this is a business-oriented PC, I really doubt that uh, they went and had the audacity to install needless programs just to clog up the hard drive. There's really no need for that. And I've upgraded it to the 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is correctly being reported in Windows System Properties. This is a Core 2 Duo. P9600 at 2.66 gigahertz. Windows is activated with a genuine key. It's kind of funny because this was advertised as being a laptop ready to go out of the box complete with a genuine and activated version of Microsoft Office 2016 and Windows 7 Professional and the two different programs uh, well both of which were it was the farthest thing from the truth. Upon starting Microsoft Office 2016 for the first time, I was met with a warning informing me that uh, Office was unregistered and unlicensed and unactivated, and that it would only continue to run for a few more days, after which point it would require a genuine key. And Windows wasn't even, well, it was showing as being genuine when you would scroll down, but the original owner left a copy of KM Spico and I didn't know what that was at first I had to look it up and it turns out it's some sort of key generator or activator for Windows 7 and maybe other versions of Windows I haven't exhaustively researched it uh, nor can I conclusively confirm what it what it did but uh, suffice it to say that it was uh, some sort of way to circumvent the Windows um, activation measures and technology and also a way to uh, completely mitigate the need to have a genuine Windows license key. And considering that KM Spico was actually flagged by Microsoft Security Essentials as uh, malware, I decided not to take my chances and just reinstalled Windows from the ground up and then did license it with a genuine Windows 7 product key because I have absolutely no patience um, or love for illegitimate software programs and piracy and things of that nature and all the nasty surprises that come along with them. I actually needed to look up and digest the Dell owner's manual to discover the functionality and meaning behind this button right here, the battery with the lightning bolt symbol, because it didn't explain what it did. It would just pop up that indicator and it actually enables or disables charging of the battery when the AC adapter is connected. So if your battery is fully charged and you want to avoid premature wear, you can just turn that off and it won't charge the battery. It'll just supply power to operate it. 720p 60 video plays just fine on Firefox. Pale Moon, not so much. Video is dropping many frames. I'm not too sure what could be behind that. But Firefox works just fine. And now it's not going to cooperate. Volume is nice and loud as well. So video plays just fine. Uh, well, looks like it's actually still dropping some frames. But you have to keep in mind that this is using Intel's integrated graphics. This has the Intel 4 Series Express chipset that comes with the Intel GMA 4500 HD graphics, which only have 64 megabytes of dedicated video RAM. That's enough soundtrack for a Century CD. Just provided background music generously for this video, but this next test needs total silence. 
For this test I'm going to play a WAV file ripped directly from a CD through the built-in speakers. Uh, the benefits of WAV are obviously going to be lost on these two stereo speakers that are incredibly tinny, but they really aren't the worst I've heard. And at least they don't distort and over-modulate like so many speakers on laptops do when you put the volume up to its maximum setting. And now for an obligatory typing test using this conventional non-chiclet keyboard, which is an absolute joy to type on, even though it isn't a mechanical keyboard. Running what is arguably the best version of Microsoft Office, in my opinion, Microsoft Office 2003, with a proper menu bar, and not one of those godforsaken ribbons, waste so much screen real estate. So if you want my opinion on the matter, I would say that the Dell Latitude E6500 still has plenty of life left in it after all of about seven years of being around. Plenty of performance that you can squeeze out of these things by upgrading to an SSD and the RAM. You could throw 8 gigabytes of RAM in this no problem and be up and running with the latest Windows operating system, be it Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 10, and not even know it that you're using a seven-year-old computer. And for those that really care about the superficial looks of their machine and are afraid of being ostracized and chastised for using an old PC, well, you needn't worry about that. It has the modern styling so many people are after with chrome accenting and a black finish. I've gotten some comments on my videos in the past of ThinkPads telling me that they look so old that they belong in the 90s and some people have even mistaken those videos for being of vintage ThinkPads and I don't know if those people just didn't watch the whole video or they're missing something, I don't know. But a Dell E6500 is plenty capable of just about every task you could throw at it. Just don't ask it to play 1080p, 60p video or even 4k video under Firefox or Pale Moon. Doing so is just asking for trouble.